Dawn of Defiance is a brand new survival crafting game set in Greek mythology, placing you with nothing to discover your role in a secret plot against the gods. Dawn of Defiance has all the resource gathering, armor and weapon crafting, thrilling combat sequences, and an excellent building system, perfect for any lover of the crafting survival genre, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. Take to the Greek landscape today, solo or with up to three friends, on public or private listed servers, through Steam or the Epic Game Store, a 25% discount on the standard $19.99 sales price till August 29th, link in the description below. I am thrilled to be sponsored by Dawn of Defiance and cannot wait to tell you about the adventure you are about to embark upon. Let's dive in. Starting off, you will find yourself on a tutorial island, the Isle of Arrival, of which you will need to conquer before progressing the main narrative on the larger main island. But to do that, you must gather resources to arm yourself for the adventure. Fortunately, Dawn of Defiance does resource gathering very well. While chopping trees and later mining rock or ore, you will see the progress of your labor with each swing of your tool, making for a more interactive and realistic experience. In fact, almost everything you will see in Dawn of Defiance can be gathered or harvested, ranging from the stones on the beach, plants scattered amongst the grass, and the trees to be chopped. While the starting island only provides the basic resources, more advanced building and gear crafting materials will soon be ours. If at first you find the introduction overwhelming, you can always check out the quest log. In the early game, your only quests will be pinned on screen to help guide your progress. However, as the game progresses and you pick up more quests, it can be easy to get lost. If in need of guidance, open your quest log and toggle a specific quest to pin to your screen for easy visibility of your progress. Soon you will be kitted with your first set of primitive weapons, tools, and armor. These will be the first of many you will craft in your playthrough. As we continue across the tutorial island and later the crossroads, more advanced resources and gear recipes will become available to you as you will see shortly. To add further gameplay depth and intrigue, at this point you have probably noticed progression made to your skills, whether it was your lumberjack skill from chopping trees or forager from harvesting plants to name a few. Almost every activity you perform in this game has a skill to be leveled, with each level providing a unique benefit. For instance, as you level your foraging skill, the yield you receive when harvesting increases. At this point, you should have enough softwood and thatch to establish your first base. While exploring for a good location to set up camp, keep your eyes open as there are tons of points of interest to find, whether they be braziers of Apollo to ignite or treasure chests to loot. Treasure chests will be critical for your progression as these contain valuable gold coins. Coins are an important resource as you will see once we land on the main island. In due time, you can begin to establish your first home. Building in Dawn of Defiance provides tons of customizing opportunities for the most enthusiastic builders out there. You will start with the simple thatch structures, but later progress to more advanced materials like wood, built from lumber, and even stone to build Greek structures that would rival Olympus itself. Beyond the structural pieces, there will be a full suite of decorative items ready to build to fully kit your home as you like. Further, ensure you craft the paintbrush and make your house a home with a vast selection of colors to fit any player's style. With shelter established, now begins my favorite part of crafting survival games and what I'd believe to be a strength of Dawn of Defiance in the crafting and refining process. In short, to build better weapons, armor, and other materials, you will need to build crafting and refining stations with more advanced stations coming available to you as you progress the game. The first of which are the crafting and hunting stations and the butcher block. My personal favorite being the butcher, and I will tell you why. At this point in your adventure, you have almost certainly encountered wildlife running through the grass like deer, rabbits, and potentially the more fearsome wolves. When hunting the island's wildlife, you can retrieve their bodies and place them on the butcher block. No need to stand idle and wait for your resources to refine. The resources will refine themselves while you go about your business. Once you return, retrieve your refined materials, place more, rinse, and repeat. Every piece of the animal will be put to good use from their bones to their blood and even their organs in the case of the rabbit's pituitary gland. Each of these items will be used to ensure the survival of our hero. Survival outside of combat is relatively straightforward in Dawn of Defiance. For instance, in this game, you do not have a hunger bar, but rather just health and stamina. For this reason, you do not need to eat food, but rather the food you eat, depending on the type, will increase your max health, stamina, or both for a period of time and potentially give you passive recovery of these bars. In my experience, it is absolutely critical you have food consumed at all times for the massive amount of stamina you will need to gather and hunt for resources and further the health for the lethal hostile creatures you will soon encounter. 
For food, you can simply eat many of the berries harvested from the earth, or better yet, cook the meat from the animals you have hunted at a cooking spit for an even better buff. Further, this game has a series of salves and later potions that can be crafted to improve your healing and stamina regeneration, and later other powerful buffs. I cannot recommend enough having these handy on your journey to vastly improve your experience. You can always check your stats at any time by opening your character screen and inspecting yourself if ever curious. Apart from that, surviving is a relative breeze. That is, until you encounter the dangers these Greek islands possess. Speaking of combat, to escape the main island, you need to complete a series of three quests at points of interest that will be protected by Greek soldiers. Fortunately, defeating them and interacting with the altars they protect earn you powers that will be critical to your survival as you progress to the main island. These soldiers and the feral lost found in caves and across the island, especially at night, are the only hostile creatures found on the starting island, but in total, you will encounter nine different types of enemies across your full playthrough. And that does not even include the various animals you have seen like the wolves and boar. Combat, while a little clunky, is varied and satisfying to execute. You have both melee and ranged options at your disposal, with the classic spear and shield being my preferred melee approach. That said, I found myself most often opting for the bow to keep my safe distance and get those satisfying headshots for bonus damage. After defeating the soldiers, you can interact with the shrine and statue for one of the three great powers. The first makes you immune from fall damage, the second giving you a dash when dodging while midair, and the third a glide allowing you to float in the air for as long as your stamina allows. With these abilities acquired, you will have earned your right to leave the starting island and teleport to the main island where the game truly begins. Landing at the Forgotten Crossroads, you will be greeted by Icus, one of three judges of the underworld challenging you to defy the gods in a secret plot. Icus will be key to your progress going forward, offering quests for gold rewards that you will undertake. Gold is the key resource for progressing Dawn of Defiance, and with it you can purchase recipes for new craftable weapons, armor, and even more crafting and refining stations to further advance the items at your disposal. The crossroads are composed of a vast land with a series of distinct biomes like the mountains, dark forests, and desert to name a few. Within these you will find new plants to harvest, new metals to mine, and more challenging creatures to overcome. In addition to providing quests for gold, Icus will also ask you to defile each of the Greek deities' shrines. Scattered across the island, there will be eight, with each associated with a different deity from Greek mythology and four more shrines to come throughout Early Access. More details on this when we cover the initial goals planned for Early Access. These shrines are like the points of interest we conquered on the starting island to gain our powers. Each will be protected by soldiers, but once cleared, will offer a distinct labor that must be completed. A labor is effectively a quest you will need to complete with each shrine having a unique task to fulfill before unlocking the shrine. Many of these labors will involve increasingly difficult combat, and this game is no joke. I found myself stuck in death loops multiple times, taking on creatures I was not yet prepared for. Fortunately, each world provides difficulty flexibility through rule sets, which I really appreciated. These can be modified at any time to ease the difficulty for a more casual experience, or alternatively, provide a challenge for more experienced players. No matter the difficulty, completing these labors is the focal point of progression in this game, but I will leave those up to yourselves to explore. To best prepare for the challenging quests, you will need to first improve your gear from the starting island. With the unlocking of the armorer station, options for weapon and armor truly open up. At this station, you have endless possibilities to craft various armor and weapons in a style that fits you, but also vary in their potency depending on the material you use to craft them. For instance, each armor recipe piece you unlock can first be crafted with copper with the lowest stats. Later, should you acquire another material like iron or as powerful as ambrosia, you could craft more powerful versions of that same gear. As you venture across the crossroads and discover new resources, you will be able to return to your base, refine the materials, and craft improved versions of your armor and weapon. Plus, the armorer station offers options to select your own personal style of weapon or armor. For instance, maybe soft leather for your cuirass, or hard leather or suede. The choice is yours. The ability to choose your look, both in the armor you wear and the structures you build, is one of the strengths of Dawn of Defiance that I, and I hope you, will enjoy. I could easily go on further, but would rather you experience this vast and beautiful world for yourselves. That said, with this game only releasing in early access, you might ask, what's next? Well, the developer Trega has your back. In fact, there are already initial goals formally planned for early access, including several great features. 
First and foremost, the Dawn of Defiance team are focused on quality of life improvements to the game and are eager to hear players' feedback and address the player base's immediate concerns. Trega will use that feedback combined with their internal planned feature list to dictate their priorities going forward. Second, with the game progression focused on the Shrine's labors, expanding those quests to upgrade the experience and ensure a thoughtful and engaging challenge will be their focus. Beyond the immediate timeline, an expansion of the map is planned to introduce the four new shrines and their associated labors in the area of the map you may have noticed is currently locked. With the unlocking of this area, players will be able to complete the final arc of their narrative. Further, a backlog of art sits at the ready to expand on the buildable items available to players to give builders more tools in their toolkits to build the most impressive structures possible. And lastly, before 1.0, the dev team has a character creation system, more mythical creatures, and mod support on the table. I strongly encourage you to check out Dawn of Defiance and make sure to take advantage of the 25% sale on Steam or the Epic Game Store before it ends on August 29th. Again, link in the description. Thanks again to Dawn of Defiance for sponsoring this video.